on, but as we've heard, we not only face elections in a week's time, but there could also be another one in a month. Euro elections are looming if we don't leave the EU in the next four weeks. These two parties only represent themselves. They don't represent us. We have got to change politics for good. And let's start today here in Clacton. Already on the campaign trail this week in Essex, Nigel Farage with his new Brexit party. Change UK, the new independent party with Cambridgeshire MP Heidi Allen at the helm, launched with a full slate of candidates. And UKIP is still there too, not only with Euro candidates, but also fighting the local elections. Yes, you want somebody who's going to stick up for you in your, lo your locality. And the second reason is you're voting on a national level to send a message to Westminster. So if you vote UKIP in your local elections, you'll get a UKIP councillor, but you will also have sent a message by the means of your vote to the Westminster class who have betrayed you over referendum. These elections are a chance to send the clearest possible message. We demand a people's vote and the right to remain and campaign to remain in the European Union. Beth Miller, we thought these elections would never happen had we left the European Union on the 29th of March. Are you pleased they are or now seem to be definitely happening? Well, obviously, because of the delay that's taken place, they now have to take place. I don't think any of us particularly wanted them to happen. We wanted, um, whether you remain or leave, you either wanted to get on with the job or you wanted a people's vote. And no, neither of those two camps have, have got what they wanted. Um, so I suppose uh, it's one of those things that, that people didn't necessarily want. Uh, but going forward, we need to prepare for them and Labour will bring out a manifesto and we'll have a full slate of candidates. Um, and, uh, you know, I know that a lot of those candidates will put their heart and soul into it for as long as they are an MEP for. Um, and and I think it's shaping up, if you like, to be a bit of a battle between Remain and Leave with the sort of Brexit parties and the non-Brexit parties. Is that tricky for Labour, as in, would you be a Brexit party or a Remain party? I don't think so. I think the European elections are about a lot more than just Remain or Leave, um, because ultimately... Labour aren't in power, it's the, it's the Tories that are in power at the moment and the decision on, uh, ultimately the decision on what will happen in uh, the autumn is up to Theresa May and whatever the parliamentary majority commands. Um, so from my perspective these are about what Labour can do for you uh, in your region um, and whether that's housing, uh, whether that's you know, lobbying but for better funding for schools. Will your manifesto say remain or leave? Well, our, our, peop our, uh, our conference vote was that we would have some form of vote um, and, you know, that's, that's open to uh, interpretation, I suppose, and we'll see more when the manifesto comes out. You will indeed. Sal Brenton, the Liberal Democrats obviously want to see another referendum. If we see the results of these Euro elections and there's a very big vote for the Brexit parties, does that kill off a second referendum? Not necessarily, because it's not a referendum in itself. I think you're right that there will be a polarisation between the leave parties and the remain parties because both the conservative and the labor parties are still absolutely split which is why we can't move forward at the moment in parliament itself i mean we were the only party that took very seriously the threat of european elections and we have actually not just selected our candidates but our members have voted for their candidates in this region because we planned for it on the off chance that it would happen so did we uh, I'm pleased to hear that as well, but I think that's really important because actually we take the democracy of being in the European Union extremely seriously. And it was made clear three years ago by the European Union that 10th, 29th of March this year was a deadline because otherwise we would need to be involved in the elections and they've said that all along in all the negotiations. Rupert Reid, if this is a kind of proxy referendum between Remain and Leave, does that rule out a second referendum if, if Leave sort of when Do you see it as a proxy referendum? I don't think it is a proxy referendum, but I think what's clear is that if you are someone who wants to vote for Remain, then you need to vote either for Lib Dems or for Change or for the Greens. We've no idea what Labour are going to stand for I, in this election. And if I could just say what the, what's additional in the Greens, it's that what we also offer, of course, is serious action on climate, serious action on ecology. And just, Vicky Ford, this, these elections the government don't want to have, are they definitely going to happen, do you think? So, it's, of it's course, way it, is, too late it, to it, you know, it. it is an enormously, enormously frustrating. I, I mean, we had a referendum in, in nearly three years ago. I voted Remain, but I totally respect that that referendum happened. People voted to leave. I voted uh, three times for the withdrawal We're running agreement, out of time. Will you be out campaigning it, for Conservative candidates? It, no, this is really important. If the Labour Party or the Lib Dems had supported the withdrawal agreement, we would not be having well, this election. Will they happen, though? We would not be having this election. Will they happen? We're going to have to leave it. So for technical reasons, I fear they she have to. Know. It's a, a <laughs> huge waste. 
of effort. But they and will. I would encourage we're people to, to leave vote. It there. Thanks very much for coming in. Goodbye. See you next month. <laughs>